Hi everyone, it's Cindy. Welcome back to Studio Lou. I am here with a flip through for you today of a journal that I've been working on um, kind of in my private time. I needed a little bit of like, you know, an exhale after November. I just wanted to have a little kind of private time to work on a journal that I found very relaxing. Um, and the type of journal this is, it is a storybook journal, which I really love making. This is a pattern for Pepper. The story is of that title by Julie Krauss. And I love, love this book. It's essentially the story of a little girl who has a fancy party to go to and she needs a dress. So I will read the whole story to you as we move through the journal and I'll talk a little bit but a little minimally about everything else going on so that I don't like lose the full story. So the book itself is four signatures. Um, it's built inside a vintage um, leather bound, um, it was a, a Herman Miller book, a Herman Mailer book. Um, it's a nice tall book. Um, it is nine and and a half probably by yeah five and three quarters it um it has metal eyelets and this beautiful coffee dyed lace that appears throughout i've got it up top here at the top of the book as well as it's the closure here and it also appears in the book several times on the spine i've added uh some indigo dyed fabric and some buttons are stitched through the spine with a couple little hand stitches there and um, this image is from the original book. I added some gilding wax around it and a little metal label um, title here with some brown handmade paper. So let's jump on in and read this story. It's a wonderful story. So the book begins with an authentic vintage cabinet card. Um, if you've followed me for a while, you know when I do these storytelling journals, I try to elaborate on the existing story and so to me this is an image of Pepper and her mom and look at the dresses right they're so cute so I made this actually like a different kind of cover than what I normally do you can see that there's fabric binding on the spine this is a beautiful wool fabric um, and the lace is here and this doesn't come all the way up which is like unique for me because I'm always like you know trying to cover exactly <laughs> but I like how this turned out. So this is actually also a pocket. See that? So I put the eyelet in behind here, but I left it open to be a pocket. Um, and it is for this little bit of stationery. This is from Taylor's, the Taylor shop in the book. On back it has this, and I thought it'd be fun to just journal on that. So I just cut it out of the book and thought it would make a really fun little journal card. And it just slips right in here behind the, um, you know, the closure. And you can leave it peeking out a little bit. I let the, the fun edge, it's got a deckle edge on this cabinet card, so I let it stick out just a tiny bit. It's a really cute detail. So we open up the book and you have, you'll see, um, this is a 49 and Market collection, this beautiful blue. You'll see it appear several times throughout the book. This is um, a depiction of our lovely, um, our girl here, Pepper, um, with her red hair. This is an image from Miles Beyond the Moon and it's a cabinet card kind of that I made from a glove box card. I made it as part of Defemerember and I thought it would be a nice place to have it right there on this beautiful scrapbook page. Paper. Uh, over here we have a belly band with some thread spools and a little wooden um, uh, darning, darning heart. And then this little sewing machine journal card. Some vintage stationery and indigo dyed paper that I dyed. This is yet another little girl in a blue dress here. You'll see the colors blue, brown, amber, gold, um, and cream that are the themes of this whole book. This is some paper that um, I designed. It's to, to look a little like seersucker fabric. Um, one thing I tried to do is many patterns are discussed throughout this book. So say you had a pattern of hound's tooth, I would try to do something that was hound's tooth in that chapter or related to a hound or something like that. You will see as we go. Um, this is some just like f like sheer fabric kind of background papers that I created um, to print on the back side of these with a little um, wooden spool glued down, some avocado dyed paper and some vintage fun fabric as a tab. And now the story begins. 
Pepper needed a dress for a very special occasion. Only the most perfect dress will do. So she and her mother have come to Mr. Taylor's shop to have one made just for her. So here they are. Indigo paper, lace, pocket. This is some vintage documents in blue and cream to go with the theme. Little spool. It's Pepper's first time at Mr. Taylor's, her family's favorite tailor shop, and the oldest and busiest in town. A bell tinkles as Pepper and her mother step into the warm and cozy store. Hello, I'm Pepper, and I need a dress for a very special occasion, she says. I'm pleased to meet you, Pepper, says Mr. Taylor. You've come to the right place. There they are, doing her measurements. More indigo paper and some fun wool fabric. A little spool on vintage stationery. This little dress is cut out from the book. And we have a fold out. First things first, let's take your measurements, says Mr. Taylor. Pepper stands on the stool while Mr. Taylor starts measuring. Next, we'll need to choose the fabric for your dress. Fabrics are textiles, and textiles come in all sorts of patterns, he says. Let me show you what I've got. Patterns are everywhere, says Mr. Taylor. See the floor? It's a herringbone pattern inspired by the skeleton of a herringfish. We could use a herringbone fabric for your dress. What do you think? Some spools. And we have our first fish um, journal card with kind of a messy herringbone stitch around the edge to look a little tattered. This is a little pocket with some sewing stuff. A little thimble on indigo paper. A fish. Fish are nice, but it's too cold underwater for me. No thank you, says Pepper. How about seersucker like your mom's dress? It's perfect for the warm summer weather, Mr. Taylor says, opening the window. The word seersucker comes from the Persian shiroshakar, which means milk and sugar because of its smooth and bumpy textures. I like my tea strong without milk and sugar. No thank you, says Pepper. And I painted this little teapot here on avocado dyed paper. More of that sheet and some measuring tape there. A little pocket with a sort of sewing collage tag. There are four of these in this book. More indigo dyed paper. A little vintage cutout of a girl from a, a little, I think it was a book on the brownies, and she's got a bunch of fabric in her hand. And here I've stitched some measuring tape. This is a lovely little poem, and I just liked the, um, it's an Emily Bronte poem. It's called Past, Present, Future, and it's not part of the story, but it's cute. And I liked the bluebird. It goes with the theme quite nicely. Tell me, tell me, smiling child what the past is like to thee an autumn evening soft and mild with a wind that sighs mournfully tell me what is the present hour a green and flowery spray where a young bird sits gathering its power to mount and fly away and what is the future happy one a sea beneath a cloudless sun a mighty glorious dazzling sea stretching into infinity so maybe that was a story that pepper's mom read her this little pocket with this tag on um, this is a doll that I drew for this book actually um, another little fun depiction of our pepper this is actually um, the fly paper from the book itself all of the illustrations and the papers in this book are beautiful beautiful work I stitched some lace down the side little spool there more indigo dyed paper this is a page from the book all those seersucker patterns what pattern is your suit? Pepper asks. Ah, this is tartan. It comes from Scotland and is woven with wool and checked patterns. Tartan is used for clothing, hats, and bagpipes. Little label here. Um, so one thing he talks about is how it's woven with wool. So this journal tag here that I made, we've got some vintage books behind. These are, this backing is from the book and this little lamb is one that I drew for my Patreon um, for the month of December and wool and the lamb, I felt like they needed to go together. And we have another little lamb here. This is a vintage image, um, just another little journal card. We have a bow back here. This is actually from um, Shabby Dabby Doodah. And then we have this little fun peachy colored pocket. A little um, 
fabric trim roll and some cute little uh, vintage, um, what is that called? Ruching um, fabric? I forget the name of it. And then um, some avocado dyed paper. This belly band is actually painted by a mouth painter um, and uh, it's it's one of many that I have from the Foot and Mouth uh, Painting Society. So people who cannot paint with their arms, they paint, they paint with their feet or with their mouths. And it's a bookmark that I turn into a belly band. Then we have this tag inside with a little sewing machine, a bit of the book, some actual fabric in tartan. And this is a little, um, little woven wool. This is actually from a couch that I once owned and I recycled all the fabric um, and then added this rub on. It's a journal tag and some swatches on av or, um, cabbage dyed ledger. Oh no, bagpipes are just too loud. No thank you, says Pepper. This makes me think of my high school um, science teacher, Mr. Cameron. He was a bagpiper who played bagpipes every lunch hour and I actually loved it. The rug you're lying on is a houndstooth pattern, says Mr. Taylor. It has small four-pointed checks that make shapes like hound's teeth. My grandfather wore this fabric while hunting in the Scottish lowlands. Would hound's tooth work for you? A little fun paper here. I like dogs, but special occasions require more color, I think. No thank you, says Pepper. Who is this? asks Pepper. Meet iCat, says Mr. Taylor. He's named after a fabric with a fancy hand dyeing process. iCat means to bind, to knot, to wind around in the Malay Indonesian language. This envelope I got from my friend Mary Ellen and I just really loved it for this book. It's like British film stars and I just thought like it, the color, the feel, all of it, it felt like maybe a letter that Pepper may have received in the mail. Um, you know, from her grandfather or something. So I made this tag to go inside. It has some of the backing paper from the actual inside cover of the book, some stitching around that's kind of swirly and fun. And this says cotton for mending and it's on a piece of woven cotton. And uh, the back is for journaling. And that just pops up in here. And it's on some cabbage dyed ledger paper. And back here, another little ribbon from our friend um, over at Shabby Dabby Doo Da, Tina. Then more of the um, fabric backing paper. Um, this is a paper that I designed. This is a little collage pocket with a wood spool. Uh, this is from my giant tickets collection and I added a little girl with a hound from a vintage book and some buttons behind her on a little vintage button card. Um, and then this is a little, um, these are the different reels, like those little on um, the ends of those wooden spools. It tells you about the different images on the reels. Avocado paper with some fun sparkly fabric, a little spool on craft paper, a couple little bits that I drew. Uh, this is a fabric flip of some fun fabrics. You had to have a fabric flip in here, right? And then underneath it, um, we have a clock from the shop, some of the fabric to, or the uh, paper from the book to write on, and a little image from the book. It's actually a windowsill from the illustrations in the book. So just like a little writing space collage there. On this side, we have this little um, Edwardian kind of hand greeting. This feels so textile to me that I was like, we have to include it in a little collage pocket. And this is a jelly printed greeting card um, with an illustration that I did quite some time ago, but it's a little girl in a blue dress and I felt like it was quite appropriate for this book. So I included it here. And a little blue paper with a spool. That sounds complicated. Yesterday, my hair was so naughty, it took four hours to sort it all out. No thank you, says Pepper. What pattern are my socks? Pepper asks with her feet in the air. Your sock pattern goes back to the 17th century or earlier in Western Scottish Highlands. Argyle is a design of overlapping diamonds and diagonal lines, and it's often used for golf clothes. Indigo dyed paper spool, original book page, and a sewing machine tuck spot for this stitchery kind of tag. 
a little pocket here and this is an image from the book itself of Pepper um, sitting on all those fabrics I did some fun stitching with thread at the top and oh there's my number three third signature I was wondering where that went this is a, an image that I did um, for that paper I always design a little collection if I can for storybook journals so this is the one that I did for this one um, or into good eyed paper. This is a vintage handkerchief. It's quite airy and fun. It has been laundered. It's clean. Um, a little shaker card here, kind of, of these little, um, there's just these iridescent sparkly bits, but you can see these two little elves with a um, thread and a big sewing needle. It's from a vintage children's book. Then a little ribbon that I, that I drew. This is some fun coffee dyed paper. I do like to play golf, but I think I want my dress pattern to be prettier than that. No thank you, says Pepper. See that man walking by outside, says Mr. Taylor? His suit is a pinstripe pattern. Some baseball teams use pinstripes too, like the White Sox. How would you like the pinstripe for your dress? He looks kind of glum. I need something extra fun for my special day. No thank you, says Pepper. Vintage stationery. This is a fabric envelope that I made. Um, that's the front of it. I love this button pattern lace. This says the aim has been to illuminate. That's just from a book. And we have some coffee dyed lace paper inside for writing space. And that just, it actually fits quite beautifully and perfectly inside of there. Um, this is a, another page that I designed. You'll also see little bits of really fun little patterned washi tapes. I use them just as like little kind of collage sort of stripes throughout the book. Like you see a little bit of it here and there. These are the patterns here that I used. And then some more of the cabbage dyed ledger and I stitched some fun vintage embroidered doily on the side of there. Another of the book pages that folds out here. Take a look at this photo of your grandma, Mr. Taylor says. She married a fellow from Switzerland and I made her wedding dress from a textile created there called Dotted Swiss. It's a delicate lightweight fabric with a small dotted pattern woven on top little spool there and I had this vintage stationery that has Swiss dot. <laughs> oh pretty but too plain for me. No thank you says Pepper. I love this cow. <laughs> the chair you're sitting on is made with toile, a fabric from France with hand-drawn scenes of the French countryside says Mr. Taylor. Hmm, this countryside looks too busy. No thank you, says Pepper. Mr. Taylor, what if I don't like any of these patterns? Little spool. Little pocket here with a button card that I made with vintage buttons on it. Little spool, and then another page from the book with the French countryside there. <laughs> Not to worry, Pepper, Mr. Taylor says, your perfect pattern is in here somewhere. So let's see, your pattern has to be pretty and strong. It has to be warm and fun, not too plain, but not too complicated either. Colorful, but not too busy, hmm? He stops and thinks. Coffee dyed paper, little spool. This is a little pocket made from um, a page of the book. This is a little uh, tag with this little journal card of these vintage buttons inside. Uh, this is from Amity Bloom, this tag, and then a little notebook that I made with just some fun different patterned paper is appropriate for this book, I think. The other side of this beautiful vintage napkin, look at that lovely embroidering. It's a silk napkin, it's very soft and wonderful. More indigo dyed paper. More of my fabric and then a little pocket with one of those tags here. That's a pattern that I designed. Then more of the 49 and Market and another of those tags, a little, they kind of go together like a little apothecary I thought. And then this is an original page from the book. I also love seeing these little flowers back here poking through between the signatures. That fabric that I backed the spine with is beautiful. And then this is a little sewing machine. A little fabric tab made from wool, another little sewing machine, and 
this is an image that I did quite some time ago but it's a girl in a little blue dress so it's like a little piece of stationery it's on some dyed aligned paper and I kind of like these two sewing machines together it made me think of like a tailor shop little spool of wool there aha I have just the thing he pulls a bolt of fabric from the shelf Pepper's eyes light up that's it she says that's the one here they are working away avocado paper with blue lace another little pocket here this is a doll that I drew some time ago and put it on this fun jelly printed music and it's like a little journal card on scrapbook paper just a little bit of 49 and market there Pepper and Mr. Taylor get to work sketching designs for the dress. There they are. This is some beautiful handmade paper with gold. Um, indigo dyed paper with a wool tab. A vintage playing card of an American goldfinch. It's on some eye cat that I drew. And this is um, a pattern pieces, a vintage pattern journal card that I made from a vintage pattern and added this image of a measuring tape on back. This is just a little girl in a fancy dress, a little flower on some blue dyed paper, a spool. When they finish their design, Mr. Taylor draws it on a huge roll of paper. He cuts out the pieces and pins them to the fabric. Little vintage um, doily. Then he cuts out the pieces of fabric, pins them together, and begins to sew. He works all afternoon. When it's time for a fitting, Pepper stands as patiently as Mr. Taylor makes a few last alterations. The dress is finally ready. Your perfect pattern is Paisley, Mr. Taylor says. A very old pattern inspired by pine cones, the shoots of a date palm, and the pods of cashew fruit. Paisley was created in Kashmir, India, where it was used for handwoven shawls, and later it became popular in the town of Paisley, Scotland, where the pattern got its name. Pepper hugs Mr. Taylor. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. It is perfect, she says. I can't wait to wear it little spool and some washi there and blue dyed paper more of that background and eye cat this is a pair of glasses that I cut it and put it on this um, indigo um, pocket and then in here I've added an authentic vintage photograph um, 1954 um, and it's this little girl and her parents and I felt like that could be a depiction of pepper and then this little stemperia tag I just loved how many textiles it had on it I thought it was appropriate for this book just very sweet little bit of writing space there too a little vintage um, buttons with birds on the indigo dyed paper this beautiful piece of paper that I can't believe I finally parted with um, is from a friend of mine who um, lives across the across the pond um, she she sent this to me and I think it's one of those like old European kind of um, cutouts I know I have some from Germany I'm not sure where this one may have came from like Norway or something um and it's it's got embossing of sparkle and a little cat there and she has a cat in the book and then inside I put this bit of vellum um to play with or to write on and it of course has a beautiful pattern that goes along with the book and then here we have more starred paper and we have pepper in her gingham dress when I saw that dress, I was, or Paisley, sorry, I, I thought I would love to draft that same dress for my daughter. It's beautiful. And here she is at her party. I think she's probably with her grandmother. Um, and they're outside and it's just a beautiful scene. And we have some spools here, uh, a little vintage button tuck spot on scrapbook paper. This is a page from the book I made this tag out of, just a little bit of the furniture from the room and it's backed with some pattern paper, avocado dyed paper with blue lace. Pepper puts on her new dress for her special day. She arrives at her grandma's house for an afternoon of tea and croquet in the garden. Happy birthday, grandma. I love your herringbone dress, she says. Pepper and her grandma sip tea, eat scones, and whack balls through hoops under the summer sun, each in their perfect pattern. And then um, the book ends here, and we have um, Pepper making little dresses for her doll. These are a couple little images from the book of these spools. And then this is a little image that I drew with some pins in this uh, little jar, little spool, 
more little images that I drew. And over here, this is the fly paper from the book. So I've added it to the end page and to this backing, a bit of gilding wax kind of here and there to give it a little grunge. This is my seal here and I added some of the same lace underneath it. And then the final journal card has this little girl in a blue dress and um, some measuring tape and this little verse. A delicate fabric of bird song floats in the air. The very smell of wet wild earth is everywhere. Red small leaves of the maple are clenched like a hand, like girls at their first communion. The pear trees stand. Oh, I must pass nothing by without loving it much. The raindrop I try with my lips, the grass with my touch, for how can I be sure I shall see again the world on the first of May shining after the rain? So just a beautiful verse to say goodbye to this book. And that is a pattern for Pepper. So I hope you enjoyed this little read along. If you're seeing this video, that means that this journal has been made available in my Etsy shop. And I hope you have a really wonderful day. Maybe pick out a new dress, um, you know, do something special for yourself. Until next time, we'll talk. Thank you. Bye for now.